another week of the Jeff Dubay Show. It's a Monday, at least for me it is. The wild continue to roll. The Gophers are back from the brink. Life is good in the state of hockey. No, I mean, it's okay in the state. I mean, it was fucking one degree all weekend long. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't blissful in the state of hockey. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we've got positivity uh, uh, to talk about. And it's going to be kind of a hockey-intensive week, uh, to be honest with you, on the Jeff Dubay Show. Wednesday, of course, Wild Wednesday. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Tony Dean, Scott Schweitz, both uh, apparently uh, uh, committed for this week. Both going to be here. We're going to be at full strength for the first time in weeks, Jason. Uh, and I'm uh, on our production meeting. What time? I was hoping for another 7.30. That works. That, that works. works perfectly, yep. Perfect, perfect. So we're going to do that one a little late. Uh, the 5 o'clock start just not working for the boys. Uh, uh, on-air production meeting, Tony Dean's schedule is about to flip in March. So, Ooh. yeah, we're going to be... We might it's be all going to get different. All right, that's yeah, cool. We might miss we'll Tony for the playoff push. We'll have to figure things out. Uh, tomorrow, a friend of mine, Nick Peters, he is uh, one of the assistant pros out at Deeron. Big golf guy. He's going to talk a little Tiger Woods with us, and he's also a huge hockey guy. He was at the Gopher Games this weekend. So we're going to talk a little Gopher hockey, a little Tiger Woods tomorrow. And today, my good friend Patrick Disher, who's now a member of the Alive and Social Network. Yep, member. I want to I want to get into some of the stuff, some of the daily grind stuff you got going on too, uh, just because I'm still curious as to get the, the, the. I mean, I work here, sort of, but I, I, the, the, I mean the, the whole. <laughs> is that function, what you call it? Well, yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's still the whole thing is just. A, it's, I, I'm here on a you know, on nearly daily basis, but the whole idea still confuses me a little bit. And Sarah, what's your last name, Sarah? I'm sorry. Sheely. Sarah Sheely, and you're and you're from Canada. And I live can, here, but yes. But I mean, you, but you're. I, 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 I'm I, representing the Canadians. Yes, and I've, and I've, I've, you know, I've been unkind to the Canadians over the. Actually, I was going to bring that up. I do believe you said something a couple weeks ago about um, Fuck the Canada, NHL, like <laughs> <laughs> the NHL being run by uh, all the idiots to our north or something along the. Well, lines? I don't understand. I don't, well, no, no, I do understand. It's, but it's just, it's just wrong. That's that, that they don't. They can't. They can't figure out the point system. I mean, it's wrong. It's, uh, to, to, to have like one game worth three points, another game worth two, worth two points. It, it it just is illogical. I agree with that, but you can't blame Canada. This is this is it's a Canadian and American. Gary Bettman's Canadian. We both play in it. it. I know he's from New York, isn't he? Fuck. It's not just Damn. the Canadians. <laughs> the Canadians Canadian. haven't just said like, "Hey, come play." No, you, you get you, to make no no decisions. Well, you, you, okay, I'm gonna give you my two biggest bones to pick with Canada. Okay. Um, other fact, I'm that, excited. I bet I've never heard that no, before. No, no, no. Well, when it when it comes to uh, tournaments like the World Junior Tournament, which okay. is a big deal in Canada. I, mean, I, mean, I don't have yeah. to tell you. I mean, the World Junior Tournament is a big deal. Or the Olympics or any international competition. I've never seen a fan base cheer so hard against another team than Canada's fans anytime USA plays. It's like, why do you hate? What's yeah. up with the hate? It's unbelievable. It's venomous. Okay, that goes both it's- ways, bro. That goes <laughs> wow. both ways. I don't think USA is that venomous about Canadian hockey. Am I wrong? Maybe not. We are, you guys are venomous about everything, Canada. Well, I am. I'm okay, venomous. let me tell you a oh, story. Blue money. I moved here. Loonies. Grade nine, Metric right? Metric system, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Started <laughs> here. It was very unfortunate because the year that I moved here, fucking South Park came out. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Blame oh, Blame Canada. Canada, yeah, 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 yeah. yes. So that was unfortunate. Perfect, so perfect. I still have to live with that. All right. However, there were so many things that you guys get that we didn't get, okay? Such as? Like, okay. freeze, above freezing temperatures by July? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Toronto. It's warmer there. Uh, you know, Toronto's actually south of Minneapolis. Yep. It is. Thank you for knowing that. I really I've, appreciate it. I've been that. to Toronto numerous times. I've, I've I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a Toronto story later. But continue. <laughs> it's a great city. It's a great city. The yeah. ultimate party city. It really is. It really is. <laughs> Lots of culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, sometimes you'll notice quite a few guys like to take Sunday off when they're playing the Blue Jays. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a Vanek move. <laughs> no, I'm talking about baseball players. Oh. You know, there's a constant, I think, everybody makes fun of us, so we got to we gotta get back Jesus on the Americans. Christ, I'm you know? a mess. Jeez, Pull it together. Sorry. I know. I'm sitting here drinking my grape juice, making all this noise. <laughs> the I knock great. it right over. It's because the Canadian's talking, isn't it? Well, I mean, you don't, you don't, you haven't said a boot or, a, or anything like that yet. I've been here quite a while. I, I think I'm rocking a pretty good Minnesota accent by now, actually. But Toronto, Toronto's probably as as Americanized a metropolitan area in, in Canada as there is. Do you think maybe that or Vancouver? I mean, I think. I mean, you speak English at least. Yeah, that's a bonus. Oh, we hate the Frenchies. See, you people up in Canada. A lot of hate up there. A lot, a lot of, of hate, hate up there. Yeah. There is no hate. Canadians are the nicest people That's you'll I, ever meet. Okay, hold on. Is that like Minnesota nice, though, where it's bullshit nice? Or no, you guys it's actually real nice. nice. Okay. It's real nice. Well, okay. I mean, you just said you Take fucking hate the, the, the Frenchies. Yeah, you hate everybody. Yeah. But, okay, uh, okay, okay. It's really nice, but we really do hate the Frenchies. Okay, well, here's my other. Here's my second uh, bone about All right, the about point Canada. system. Give it to me. No, no, no. The, the booing of the national anthem. No, it's nobody hap- does that. It's happened a few times. No, I'm no, sure. no, 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 no. I mean, no. 
Just the so Americans mostly might the Frenchies. Boo, yeah. The Americans might boo the Canadians. No, you know what? But I think there's a lot of jealousy about the Canadian national anthem down here. I think people. I have it. I, I, ha- see, I, I have don't. Jealous of it. I don't. I think I it's way better are. than ours. It's I, so see, much I disagree. Better. I disagree. Ours was written by a guy in a prison cell watching you know, a, 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 a battle take place that was going to d- determine the future of his nation, and he waited till the sun came up to see if the American flag was still up. I mean, that's, that's you, you, you guys. You guys is written by like a, 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 a jingle writer in Madison <laughs> Avenue. I mean, he just sat down and scribbled out. Oh, you know, God keep my land, glorious and free, blah, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just, it is, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a Celine Dion song. It's, it's all a beautiful it anthem. It's, 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 the, the, it's that fucking heart goes on from the Titanic. It's your national <laughs> anthem. It's, it's really all it is. And it brings you Seriously. a tear every time. I'll no, it isn't because thing. you know what it does to me? Every time it makes me laugh. You know why? Blue Cause, vein. Because blue vein. <laughs> You know, I, I can't stop thinking every time. I'm gonna, I hear I'm gonna, that I'm gonna, I, you know what? I might actually give you. I'm, I, I've always teased to it. I might just give you the. I might regale everybody right now. I'm not gonna sing it, but I might tell you the lyrics. But "Oh Blue Vein" is uh, is "O oh Canada" to, uh, to to its own set of lyrics, as uh, as written by Kent Herbeck. Because you know, whenever the Blue Jays would come to town, you'd get the two national anthems. And I don't know. I've never heard this. And, and no, well, well, you probably was, haven't. <laughs> I have not either. Typically, actually. typically, most of the players get to the top step of the dugout for a national anthem. Uh, those who don't care to stand at attention or you know, get they're, they're getting mentally ready for the game, they stand back in the runway. And that's what Ken Herbeck would sing, Oh, Blue Vein." For Toronto, the, the dugout would be empty because everybody wants to listen to Herbeck sing, "Oh, Blue Vein." And uh, maybe I won't give you all the, the, the Blue Vein, but it, the, the, the Blue Vein is. <laughs> Uh, a, a, a vein uh, uh, runs up the back of his manhood, responsible for I, his I know erections. Where you're going. I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then the highlight of the uh, of the song would be uh, "God Keep My Hand Callous Free." It's this is her back, huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Oh, blue vein, you stand erect for me. Yep. It's a it's it's a classic. It's a timeless, timeless classic, and it makes it almost makes me not hate Canada. I am actually shocked that in all the Canadian jokes I've heard, I have never heard that one. It's pretty amazing. I'll have to look into it later. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's, uh, he never did copyright it, so the lyrics are not available online. You will never find it. But it should have been all recorded all right somewhere. Yeah. How can it's you not right find here. something online? You know, he tried to be discreet. I don't want any international incident about this. You know, no. we're not getting you know. Canada well, not anymore. Off. You just blew it all out there. Well, yeah. well, I mean, he didn't mean any offense by it. I mean, he, I mean, he has great reverence for his penis. I'm sure. So it's, it's not <laughs> like it's, it's not like he's comparing Canada to something you know that, he, that he's that he's mocking. No, it's a love song. Yeah, but it is. It really is when you look at it that way. But that's okay, kind of, I'll tell you one up. thing about the two national anthems, right? Yes. Okay. Well, by the way, this is the Jeff Dubay Show. Jason Montgomery, Jeff Dubay, Patrick Disher, Sarah Sheely. Sheely. <laughs> God, I'm bad at last name. Okay, continue. All right. I just became that an American the citizen. Loudest, yeah, the loudest. Why do you have drink ice ever? in your Powerade? That's not Powerade. It's grape juice. I just recycled the bottle. Oh, all right. Took it out of a garbage. I don't know who used it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just, it's fine. It's fine. Dust kidding. it off. It's good. Okay, I just became an American citizen last year, right? And oh, I will tell you one thing about the American national anthem. That shit makes you feel super patriotic. Every time you hear that before a football game, I mean, I'm almost brought to tears. Francis by, Scott by the Nash, see, I'm. I think America the Beautiful is way. Yeah, better. I'm but big again, into that's, that one. That that's actually like, brings a tear to my eye. But that's just like, oh, Canada. Oh. That's just like a. That's like a. That's like a Louis Armstrong song. It's like a Celine Dion. It's just like somebody writing, sitting down and writing. But the other one's just Cornelius. about war and, and they, it's, it's, blowing it's, it's, shit up. No, like, it's, it's, but it's historic. I mean, it's like a guy. Yeah, it, a guy. A guy's been... locked up in a prison, a, a, a brig of a ship, if I'm not mistaken. He's he's like locked up in the in an enemy ship. As a, and being held as a spy, as he's, that's you know, Francis Scott Key, and he's watching this battle take place outside of Baltimore, outside of Chesapeake Bay. Was it Chesapeake or was it another, wherever that fucking fort was, fort whatever. And he's, <laughs> history and he's, by yeah, Dubai. This is a history well, I mean, lesson I mean, for all the kids, kids out there. It's, it's the War of 1812. I'm learning that's something the about American tw- history. It's not, not even the Revolutionary War. It's the War of 1812. And, 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 and he's watching the British you know, just, you know, ships come in and try to storm past this, 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 this fort in or near Baltimore and Fort McHenry. Poor McHenry. And all right, all right. And Take I mean, he's sitting, there, he's sitting there all night long watching bombs go off and he waits till the morning and he sees the fucking American flag. He gets a little chubby and he goes, fuck yeah. And it's, I mean, that's what it is. It mm-hmm. is what it is. I bet that's how he described it, too. I got wouldn't a little cool? chubby. Wouldn't, and that, then I... wouldn't that be the grave if that was the end of the song? Fuck yeah, <laughs> USA. No, but I wonder how long they drag out that word is. for. You go south of the Mason-Dixon line. I think it is. It is, think, it is. I think the tune was like ripped off from a, an old bar song uh, or something. Probably. So, yeah, that's so like some old pub song or something. There is something to be but. said when they sing that song and the jets come flying over and the fireworks oh, yeah. go off. And yeah. I mean, even just at a Twins game, you feel good when you hear that, you know? Well, yeah, depending on the opponent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's, uh, there's a lot going on hockey-wise. I mean, the Wild are on a, a historic streak right now. I believe it's the longest... Uh, consecutive game point streak in the history of the of the franchise, and what a you know, will be tonight. history it's been. Oh, uh, will be. Well, I hope so. Um, the late start uh, tonight. Tonight for us is Monday. That's uh, Vancouver. 
again, tonight could be something entirely different for you whenever you're listening. It's a podcast. But for us, it's going to be uh, it's a Monday night with Vancouver and uh, Wednesday night, Calgary. And Friday, Edmonton. Oilers, yeah. So they got the every other they got the every other day thing going on now, and uh, they're back right out west. Seems like they were just there, so, and they did. It's a it's a three gamer that they swept through, with three regulation wins last time. And I'm not going to say they need to do that again, but God, if they did, it'd be fucking huge. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Well, you called this streak too. Remember podcast a couple you. weeks ago? Thank soft you. Soft schedule yes, coming up a month ago. Yeah. I mean, that, that, who, who who pointed out the soft schedule a long time ago? Look at me. Uh, you have less than the thermals. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, they're we cold each other. outside. We yeah. call each other. It's three uh, degrees outside. I, I'm still sticking to the if they don't make the playoffs, though, you cursed them. So yeah, I mean, that goes but, both ways. I, I, it's hard for me to imagine them not making the playoffs right now. And I know that's, that's no, just they the look kiss good. of death. They look good. And, and I, have, I have jinxed more. I brought more sports teams down. I mean, it's. It, it, I mean, I had a run back in the PA Dubai days. It was just epic. I mean, t- people would beg me to not mention them. Yeah, keep uh, keep our name out of your mouth. I mean, it was. Yeah, no more guarantees no, uh, of was, any other teams until this one works out. Oh, it was schlep rock. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. People just. They, they saw me. They, they. They almost rescinded my media passes. I mean, it was. It was. It was getting sketchy. It was getting very sketchy. But you know what's cool about it? And you, you, right away, you started with the Vanek shots. I'm sick of Vanek haters. I was kidding. I was kidding. Sick of People Vanek. People overreact. No. I love Vanek. He's fine. Everyone's just complaining. Well, here's, here's, He's too here's, slow. His feet are gone. Yes, I've, like, I've, I've, I've not seen speed hurt him yet this year. No. Right? No, it hasn't been the big difference, I don't think. No. No, I, I mean, here's what happened. Uh, and it happened to basically everybody on the team. I mean, the fucking thing was so disjointed that the, the team fell apart. I mean, the goaltending had, it had destroyed the confidence. Nobody could play their game. I mean, there's a reason why... Pominville, Suter, Van, you go down the Koivu. I mean, you go down the list. Established NFL star players all sucked at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it, was it, was, it wasn't Vanek. Yeah. It was brutal. It, it was, was a group a, effort. It was you got a to sieve watch. behind you. you well, know, that was the thing. And everything. That was the what thing. Do? The goaltending was just god awful. And that's where Schweitz nailed that. With it was the, it was the morale. It yeah. was just and he it just was because play. of having nothing the behind savior, you. Savior Dubnik. Well, that's oh. the thing. I mean, Dubnik's put up sick numbers, but he's not a great goalie. He's he's gone on a nice run. Nice. Every time I hear but you know what? Like, I have nice. to play that. But what, 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 it, what it does is, is, for the first time all year, there's a guy back there who you just figure, you know, the guys are just, the rest of the team can just say, okay, he's going to make the saves he should make. He's not going to throw any games away. We can just, we can go play and see what happens. I yeah. mean, that's, they didn't even have that. And then, of course, now he's wound up stealing a handful. I mean, mm-hmm. he's had, you know, four shutouts and number one goal games. And, I mean, he's, he's, he's been more than just a guy who gives him a chance. He's been a guy who's made a difference. So, uh, but just 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 to be just to be in a game where you know you don't have to fucking score six to have a chance. I mean, yeah. they, because you, you just you can't. It's play nice it. to score six to have a chance, though. Saturday was great to see that. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a little there's a little puck luck in there, but I mean, oh, it was yeah. a fun game. How about to watch. that? What a, what a sniper Prosser is, huh? Oh my god, God, was that fucking embarrassing? It's like it's like uh, you know like a three point shot off the backboard. You just shouldn't count it. <laughs> yeah. you, should just, you should just go up to the ref yeah, and wave it off it. yourself. I can't take that. <laughs> I mean. Uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, Vanek made a beautiful pass to him. Uh, yeah. And Vanek has been a, a great assist guy. He made a great pass. And Prosser all of a sudden is, you know, all alone with the goaltender, 10 feet out. And he basically shit himself. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck am I? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home, you know, physical defenseman. Here I am at the doorstep. And someone's going to expect me to do something. So he tried to make an extra pass to Granlin. And mm-hmm. luckily, the, you know, defenseman put it in. I mean, it was fucking terrible. It's like the night of the golfers, too. We got all the Gophers scoring Saturday night. Oh yeah, that's right. More, more that's goals right. in uh, in St. Paul by the Gophers than in Minneapolis. That is correct. Two that wins correct. though. Yep. Yep. Can't complain. My squad. My squad. My squad looks like they're back. Hey, let's take a quick break. Uh, we'll come back and reset things. It's the Jeff Dubay show. Hi, I'm Terry Daniel, and I've been a voice actor in Minneapolis for over two decades now. How often are you getting compliments on your voice? Now is the time to do something about it. If you're interested in getting into voiceovers, please contact me via my website at universalvoicetalent.com. Okay, last year, 2013, I lived uh, just down the road, Pleasant Avenue, just a few blocks here from Uptown Pond, which is right on the corner of Lake and Pleasant. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of times, you know, you, you just try to get to that next payday, maybe a couple of bucks short. Uh, if you've got some items, jewelry, diamonds, uh, electronics, I mean, you come down here and they give you a fair price for it. And then you come back a week later, two weeks later, whatever, you get it back at a real reasonable price. So we're very competitive, we hope, on, on different angles, in different ends and different articles. Uh, computers, electronics, TVs, mm-hmm. uh, jewelry. Uh, we, we, we buy, we give loans, um, and we also have uh, emphasis on, on diamond jewelry too, uh, that we also try and give credit for the best we can. We're specialists in that area also, so it's an all-round sort of uh, combination. Well, it's a great place. It's a nice, clean place with honest people, and I tell you what, it's got a real family feel to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's tied into Strauss family, and I go way back right. with, with the late, great right. Jerry. So, I mean, these right. are people I know and people I trust. You can find them on Twitter, too, by the way. They're at Uptown Pond, and also on Facebook, Uptown Pond and UptownPond.net. Mm-hmm. 
We're back. Come March, there'll be some teams looking to go downtown, looking for a little more than you know what. They'll be looking for a little hockey title. It's the NCHC Frozen Faceoff. Uh, it's coming to the Target Center. It's March 20th and 21st. Uh, they got all kinds of great deals and specials going on right now. As a matter of fact, you can get an, uh, an entire session. I mean, you can go to, go to all four games over the two days, the semifinals, third place, and championship game. You can see the whole, the whole shooting match for as low as 60 bucks. So it's a fantastic deal. Uh, if you want to buy the whole uh, ticket package, entire ticket package, go to one 888 9 tix or else uh, targetcenter.com. Uh, also, if you are going to be going to the uh, NCHC Frozen Faceoff, you're coming down from Duluth, uh, Grand Forks, you're coming in from Miami of Ohio, whatever. Uh, you, know the, you know the locales, you know the birds. It's a hell of a conference, by the way. Denver, CC, wherever, wherever you're coming in from. Uh, you're looking for a hotel. Uh, there's, a, there's a link on my Facebook page and on my Twitter account. So go check it out at Jeff Dubé. Uh, and, and there's a link for you to click where you can get discount hotel rooms. I mean, they've, they've, they're running specials, one packages. And I'm not talking like flea bags. I mean, I'm talking about the nice downtown hotels. Uh, they're just working in concert with the good folks of the National Collegiate Hockey Conference. And it is, I mean, I'm a, obviously I'm a Gopher fan. I'm a Big Ten guy, but th- th- there's no doubt that the NCHC is the prize conference in all of college hockey. It's just absolutely loaded. Uh, when they put the thing together, they, they put it together to be a beast, and it is a beast. It's, uh, it's a fantastic league, and it's going to be a great event. They had a little bit of bad luck last year. The teams, uh, teams were dropped like flies in the first round. Duluth lost in the first round on, uh, at home ice and uh, St. Cloud on home ice. Yep. The, they, they were the conference champion. They lost. Uh, North Dakota came down here and lost in the semis. So I mean, yeah, the, the teams that they needed all kind of crapped the bed. But uh, you know what? They got four teams, at least four teams in the top ten. When I looked last week, they had four, uh, including Duluth at six, North Dakota at two. I think North Dakota's up to number one. So it's a, it's a packed league, a great uh, event. And uh, come down and check it out. Target Center. They're also going to be having a fan fest. I mean, they're, they're, they're putting a lot of production into this thing. It's going to be a fantastic event. I think we're going to be doing a show uh, down at Kieran's for the fan fest. Nice. So we'll get, to, wait. We'll get to check, check out the rubes, hang out with the rubes. Because North Dakota folks, they love they love me. They love Dubai. <laughs> <on the Central Florida. laughs> As a matter of fact, we're going to be having some guys on the show. Uh, uh, Dave Hackstall, uh, I believe, will be on the show. Dave and I have had uh, a stormy relationship in the past. <laughs> I called Darcy's Ajax a punk, so he wouldn't come on the show for like two years. So we patched it up. We patched it nice. up. Nice. Uh, I called him a punk and a thug, actually. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, you know, I apologize. We patched it all up. Uh, Bob Motzko St. Cloud, who is a good friend of mine. We'll have a fantastic time uh, chatting with Bob. It's Scott Sandlin, who's somewhere in the middle. Sometimes he can put up with me. Sometimes he thinks I'm a douche. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes with those three. Hopefully we'll, we'll have him on in consecutive Wednesdays, late February, early March, leading up to the, the NCHC. A uh, frozen face-off, their four-team uh, uh, league championship tournament. You guys watch? You watch any college hockey? Well, I, you do. I mean, you know who Vanek is. Yeah, I know. I love college hockey. I just am a little upset about the whole WCHA that sucks. leaving. Yeah, it's, it's just the worst. The Big Ten is a joke. Yeah, money grab. Our bitter rival, rival Ohio State. You know, it's know. awesome <laughs> to watch it's, them. I know. It's it's really boring. And, and, and last year, the I mean, it's just I was just about how the NCHC got kind of screwed at the gate because all these Minnesota schools lost, and yeah. then North Dakota went out early. They still outdrew the Big Ten tournament. I'm sure. I mean, there, there was nobody at that goal for Ohio State game last yeah. year. And the semifinals, just terrible. Purdue, the big the big hockey power, Purdue. Well, those were all at the X, right? Both? No. The, 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 the Big Ten was at the Big X. Ten was at the X. And Where was the... The NCH is at the Target Center. Oh, and, and it's the thing every year now? This is Well, they got a four-year deal. So last year was the first year. So they got, they got this year. Well, it was a five-year deal. Whatever. They got, I think they got this year and three more. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it must have been a five-year deal. Uh, and the X is rotating every other year with the Big Ten and the WCHA. I don't know where the WCHA championship was last year. I, I, did, did you, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have, no, I, I, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, this year, the Big Ten's in uh, Joe Louis Arena. So they, they flop back and forth between nice. Detroit and, and, and St. Paul. So hopefully, uh, I don't know. It, it just the, Every year, the WCHA Final Five, do you guys, guys ever go to it? I've been there a bunch of times. I love it. It was, it was the best event. I've actually oh. never been, but oh. I just oh hear that God. it's so out. amazing. It was. It was always amazing. Well, for, for so many reasons. Um, the, the, well, you, have, you had a league with you know, the best teams. I mean, it was, it was the best league in the, in the country, and you had intense rivalries. I mean, 
uh, especially if you're Minnesota. If you're Minnesota, it's just a bunch of border battles, you know, well, yeah. or, or in yeah. state, yeah. you know. Or so it's yeah. just. Yeah. I mean, who do, who do, when you're Minnesota, who you who's not geeked up to play? Even even Denver and CC. I mean, even mm-hmm. the teams that are coming from a ways away. I mean, and then you yeah, the the state schools, North Dakota, and North Dakota brings a ton of hillbillies down here. Oh, they uh, travel well. Yeah, they uh, travel wouldn't, wouldn't very you, well. If you lived in Grand Forks, wouldn't you look for any opportunity, <laughs> any, any fucking excuse, any reason to leave? Yeah, anything south <laughs> oh at God. all? Let's oh, go. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's I'm telling you, I, if people from Canada are making fun of Grand Forks, you know. Grand, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding you. Gra- I mean, Grand Forks, there are. It's the coldest, windiest, most godforsaken place on the face of the earth. And I'm not saying this because I hate. You know, the, I mean, because of the, the the hockey rivalry. I mean, I've been there so many times, and it is fucking awful. Yeah, it wasn't is f- it actually like fifty six degrees in Grand Forks though? Like a couple well, days ago. Well, then they fuck. Then God fucks with me because whenever <laughs> I go to Grand Forks. It is 20 degrees colder with 10 more feet of snow than we have. I and mean, this is fucking Minneapolis. It was literally yeah. 56 degrees there a couple days ago. I'm, Jesus. I'm not kidding. When I, like, when I would go there, like, let's say the Gophers would be there early in the season, like late October, early November, and, and there's, not a, there's not a flake of snow on the ground. It's like late fall here. <laughs> and we, you know, I, you know, we'll fall, I'll fall asleep around Fargo, wake up as we're pulling into Grand Forks and be like, where the fuck are we? <laughs> I mean, there's 10 feet of snow. It's, it's like 10 September. Feet of Siberia. It's like, what the fuck just happened? It's, unbe- it's unbelievable. It's just flat. Like, Seriously. Not even a hill. Oh, the the state trees, the uh, the telephone yeah, pole. Exactly. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is. I mean, it is the, the the change from here to there. You wouldn't in, in weather. It's outrageous. It's brutal. I mean, is it just really really cheap to live there? Like, why would you live there? I don't know. It well, now cheap. with the oil too. There's got. I mean, oh yeah, well yeah, well yeah. Oh, well, you okay, know, there's actually, right, there's actually, 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 well, here's the other thing too. There's there's a, there's a lot of money in that area. And before the oil, it was it was uh, uh, farmers. I mean, beet farmers are fucking rich. They're, they're, they're some, I mean, the the whole American needs farmers. Hayden Fry, yeah. Iowa um, farmer crisis. Thing, crisis, not in North Dakota. No. I mean, sugar beet farmers have like bitches. I mean, yeah. they got they got. I mean, they got <laughs> like gold plated tractors. I mean, totally. they, I, I mean it's they, they, it's unbelievable. They might have. They some, are the pimps they, of they, farming. Oh, they might they might still own slaves. <laughs> I oh, live Jesus. in their life. I'm telling the the the, the 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 sugar beet farmers in Grand Forks are. Are rolling in dough, and yeah. they always have been. I mean, they got the smelly ass refineries that take sugar beets and turn it into sugar. Yeah. Oh, those places for for, for making something that tastes so good that smells so fucking bad. I don't think I've ever had to smell that. Thankfully. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I, I, I was really naive for most of my life. See, now I, you know. I'm now you're not at all. Tra- well, traveled and wise. Now, 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 now I know all the tricks. I, I just assumed sugar came from sugar. I didn't. I had to become an adult to realize it came from corn and sugar beets. We'd, yeah. We we rarely eat real sugar. No, I mean, that's it just true. It's usually all the, the processed shit. Yeah. 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 So Which is way chemicals. better for you. Chemicals. But, 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 but I don't know that it's that cheap. Uh, maybe it's cheap to live up there. But I mean, people up there are fucking loaded. I mean, whether they're the farmers or the oil people. Well, you I have mean, to be, though, because you have to be able to leave and go somewhere where the sun shines more yes, than, you, know, that's you know, true. You once out of eight months, yes. you know. And again, this is from a person from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto. Well, yeah, it, it, it does blow people's minds to, to know the Toronto south of Minneapolis. When she, I first moved really here, people literally out. people asked me if I grew up like with it, living in an igloo. And I'm like from a huge when I moved here, I was like, where is this place? This is the smallest little city and which now I love. But I'm from Toronto. It's a huge city. What is like, the population of, Tur- it's of very Toronto? Metropolitan. Oh, man, I'm. And they well, guess. A lot. Well, it's got a ton. It's got. It's got. A, it's got more a ton. Two. Well, it's okay. A, it's a party. It's, it's, it's a shit that. ton more than here. It's How a renowned. That? It's a renowned party town. I mean, it's got a lot. Oh, of I would life. love to go party. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that, here's here's my Toronto story. It's uh, this was 1991. Uh, twins uh, looking to clinch the uh, the American League West, and uh, we went on this trip. Me and the other Bat Boy Clubhouse guys. We went on this trip because we wanted to be there when they clinched. It was uh, at Toronto and then Chicago. And it was, uh, the, the magic number was, you know, one. So they had to get, uh, this was a Saturday day game. And they had to, uh, they had to win and Chicago had to lose for it to happen that day. And of course it didn't line up well. The Twins were like the afternoon game of the week. Uh, and, um, and the White Sox were playing a primetime game. And I don't, re- I don't remember a lot of details of the game because I re- the rest of the day is like more memorable. But the Twins won. So they clinched a tie for the AL West title. And uh, now I was like, well, great. So what do we do? Fucking yeah. dinner with our dicks in our hands while we wait for the Chicago game tonight? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Don Cherry set the whole team up at his place. Is Don Cherry still in Toronto, the, the sports bar? I, you know, I don't know. It's you know Don Cherry since, is. Yeah, but it's been a long time since I've been there out partying. So. No, I suppose. Well, Don, Don Cherry is you know, a legendary NHL coach and NHL right. uh, you know, announcer. Uh, real old school, like hardcore, cement head kind of guy. I mean, like, like you know, loves the thugs and the goon squads and all yeah. that. So, uh, you know, old time hockey, toe Blake, blah, blah, blah. Eddie Shore. So he, he, uh, he, he just, so Don Cherry sets up uh, the team in a, in a, in like a back room, private viewing room with like a, you know, you know, a projection TV covering an entire wall. Uh, and that's big, like long banquet table. So we're all there. We're all at Don Cherry's like watching the White Sox. 
And, um, you know, because if, if the White Sox lose, the Twins are champs. And every, everybody, without exception, in that room wanted Seattle to win. Nobody wanted to, you know, have, have a clinch, you know, by, you know, Seattle beating. Yeah. And then, hey, we're at Don Cherry's. Hey. Back door in. Yeah. So uh, it, uh, it turns out uh, Seattle did win. So the next night or the next day, Sunday, to get away day in Toronto, the Twins had a chance to clinch on the field. And uh, if I do remember this one correctly, Scott Erickson, uh, you know, who was really struggling at that point. I mean, he had the great first half, and then mm-hmm. he was, you know, he, he kind of Liriano'd the season. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, but he, but I mean, he, he, he pitched, in, uh, unlike Liriano, who, who was, was fried. And had, yeah, uh, Tommy threw John. his arm out. But, uh, but Erickson, like, gutted his way through it, like a, a really good start. Kind of like the game, kind of like uh, similar to, uh, like, game six of the World Series. Like, six innings, give your team a chance. Yeah. You know? but, uh, but the squad just couldn't score. They lost, like, two to one or something to, 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 to Toronto. And that's when, I think you've all, yeah, most people have seen the video, like, we're all on a fucking bus going to Hamilton because the Toronto airport's a pain in the ass. Customs, you know, teams like to fly in and out of Hamilton and bus. Nobody wants to go to Hamilton. Well, unless you're getting, <laughs> it's just, you've we, got like some sort of out, you are not going to Hamilton. Well, no, but it, it makes you kind of feel like a rock star because you pull into this like small airport and you get out on the tarmac and walk up the steps, you know, like you're, like you're Jimmy Page getting on the Starship. Get on a private jet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I never, never, I never it only done has, that. It only fits 16 people, but it's a private jet. I mean, you always, <laughs> we always see, you always, we always see like big shots and like they, they get driven up on the tarmac and they walk up steps into a, a jet. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've never seen I know what you mean. Life. I never seen that in real life until you know 1991. I got to do it leaving Toronto. And I turned around and waved to fucking a cow. Let's like, Hamilton yeah, to a <laughs> I mean, one person yeah, that works there. Yeah, Hamilton was kind of a burg, but um, waving like your Nixon. But I mean, we're all in, we're all on buses, and this is like before <laughs> He's cell phones. people. <laughs> like, we didn't have cell phones. Nobody had cell phones. Yeah. Oh well, a couple people did. They're like yeah. dignitaries, and uh, actually, what it uh, what it took dignitaries. What what, it, what I think it took was the bus driver getting on the CB. To find out a final from Chicago, and sure enough, Chicago had lost again. Or uh, Chicago won Saturday night. I got the nice. whole thing wrong. Chicago won Saturday night to keep the thing alive. Ah. But then they lost Sunday for the Twins to clinch. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm sitting in the back of this fucking Greyhound, just you know, trying to stay as far from the bathroom as I could. And all of a sudden, people get up and start shaking hands. It's like, oh, I guess fucking Chicago lost. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's that was that. But I tell you what, that night in Chicago. It fucking got tore down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I've never, I've never seen anything like it in my life. The, the, um, we, we get there and we check into the West End, you know, right on the Miracle Mile there, and right across from this, the Hancock. It's, I mean, it's right in the middle of everything, and uh, we, you know, every uh, check in gets a note saying, you know, the West End is prepared. You know, they welcoming the Minnesota Division Champion, Minnesota Twins, blah blah blah. Uh, we've got a, a party set up for you, and you know, so, uh, you know, people. After about an hour or so, they start, start milling into this this banquet room at the Westin. I mean, everyone's still in their suits and ties because we just traveled. Um, then it's, you know, it's, it's a formal yeah. family. I mean, just, this is, a, this is like a, it's almost like a, like a rich person wedding reception. I mean, it's just, the, you know, the, the, the biggest, fanciest, nicest room in the Westin, decked out with just, you know, big, giant, you know, uh, crystal bowls, uh, you know, filled with ice and, and bottles of, of champagne. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like it's, you know, it's not a WAP. Let's just yeah. put it down. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's you, know, sh- you know, big, you know, shrimp the size of your head. I mean, it's, like a real classy affair. Yeah. Three hours later, the walls are smeared with cake. The floor squishes with carpet. Nice. Everyone is intoxicated and half naked. And I'm not kidding about this because what they started to do when they started to get drunk is, uh, you know, Gladden and Newman are the instigators. They started walking around and sneaking up behind people. You know, you always get that slit in the back of your sports coat. Yeah. They grab that and wishbone right up your back. And, then, <laughs> and you'd be surprised how quick that goes. I don't care if, I mean, these are nice suits. These are yeah. pro ball players. I mean, that thing just rips and, and it's done. Uh, so I mean that's what they, you know they, they basically they got every sport coat you know ripped in half. Nice. Uh, and and, uh, and and then they started, you know, sneaking up by people and, and, and like ripping their shirts. And it's, I mean, by the time it was over, <laughs> like children. I yeah. mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, the, the, the ripping ripping pants. I mean, people look like castaways. Down the seam of their pants, yeah, all, too. All the way up to the hip. Like from the fr- <laughs> That's exactly how I picture it, though. Like, just being a fan, I practically want to behave like that. So, if we, that, if we, if we win that's the division, true. Or it was, it was I'm going to go out ripping people's well, suits but, and popping champagne. So, but I, I, I finally want... It's, it's time to, people decide it's time to go hit, hit uh, you know, Rush Street and you know, really get stupid. But everyone's got to go get dressed first. Everyone's wearing tatters. It's yeah. like a bunch of castaways. <laughs> it's like a scene from Lost. And, and <laughs> I, I, I happen to walk out of the ballroom and into an elevator with Chili Davis. It's just me and Chili. And Chili has basically no pants on. He's got a belt with, with, with like, st- strands of, a, of a dress pants hanging from it. I mean, he's covered. He's, I mean, he's decent. Yeah. But he's, he's an enormous African-American man with, a, with big, giant pecs. I mean, he's an intimidating figure. He's got no shirt on, and he's got a shred of his hair, of his, of his shirt, tied around his, hat, his head, Rambo style. Jesus. <laughs> so he and I get onto an elevator with basically 
Thurston Howell and Lovey. I mean, it's like this. Eight, do you guys get Gilligan's Island references? Yeah. It's just an <laughs> eight, a very aged, very well-to-do blue blood. I mean, like a, just a couple of seventy year, seventy plus, you know, really wealthy, you know, snobby blue bloods. And we get on the elevator. The woman like has this look of terror on her face. Oh my god! And this little eighty-year-old man like steps in front of her, like and, and like, like, like look, a protector, and, and like looks up at Chili. And I'm just like, he he and I he and I, he and I looked at each other and just busted a gut. Like number one. There's not a fucking thing you could do. Yeah. <laughs> Chili Davis no. could kill all of us with yeah. one hand if he wanted to. It's like, he's Chili Davis. He's not a gangster. Fucking yeah. relax. This is the West End. What do you think's going to happen? Yeah. But, I mean, he was pretty intimidating. But, it, well, if he had the Rambo thing going. That, yeah, like, the Rambo. Yeah. Naked no Rambo shirt. just yeah. got in the elevator. By, yeah. by the way, terrified. how drunk is he? Yeah, what, 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 I'm a little what, scared right now, too, actually, thinking about it. 16 bottles of champagne, okay? Well, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, probably the he might be the coolest guy I met in, 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 in that whole experience. I mean, I was there for six, six and a half years, and I met... I met you know a, a ton of really awesome people because the twins, that's what they did. I mean they had great fucking people. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean yeah, there was always the time you heard to fuck things up for a while. But I mean <laughs> for the most part, I mean it was as as good and genuine a bunch of guys you'd ever meet. Chili Davis is, I mean he's salt of the earth. I mean yeah. you, you'll never meet a better guy. Just, you'd love him to death, dude. Why? Why do you say I would in particular? Well, he's he's one of these guys who he's kind of jeter like. You know, he stayed single, ladies man. Like, oh, so he's a really smart guy who yeah. had a lot of fun. All right, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Totally yeah. understand yeah. that. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. 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 Totally he's his veteran. He, he took Scotty Erickson under his wing, had him live with him as his roommate. He's like tw- you know ten, twelve years older than him, and like just. Like, I feel big, like Erickson went down that he, road for a while himself. He, he big brothered him. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, he got smart. Oh yeah. <laughs> as yeah. Well. yeah. Well, I think he had a little. Well, not so smart. I think he had a little talk with him after the Bullwinkles episode. But you know, just like, hey, dude, there's a there's a hotel across the street, man. It's Right there, fucking right. kitty corner. It's seven corners. Just pick a corner and go to the fucking hotel. But yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you remember the Scott Erickson rumors? I mean, uh, you remember Inga Hammond? Mm-mm. This is this is not a rumor. This is true. Inga Hammond went down on him in the restroom at Bullwinkles. Nice. Yeah, I mean, she was on she was on fucking CNN for a while. She, nice, wow. Nice. I mean, she was she was on Channel Five at the time. Yeah. That she was hot before <laughs> the cell phone era. Yeah. Oh God. Well, yeah. I want to know how it's there. not a rumor, but it's definitely true. Because I know. Because you were there. <laughs> he wasn't quite in the room, maybe for say. I wasn't, I wasn't in the maybe he was guarding the door. I wasn't in the stall. Possibly. I wasn't in the stall, but no. it, I know this. This, yes, yeah, trust me. I, and this wasn't a Roethlisberger type of thing. This was oh, no, all this consensual, consensual, right? Oh, no, okay, no, no, okay, oh, dude, okay. I think she's. I think she kept calling me to do it again. <laughs> to be honest with you, though. all right. No, but then, yeah, she was yeah, creeping through some hole somewhere. You should look them. her up. You, you can Google her. I mean, yeah. she was on CNN. She's famous. I mean, she's got a Wikipedia page, much like myself. Just, nice. I, I'm sure they're very similar too. The information in them. Well, Full I mean, truth. we each, we each, we each have the highs and lows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's a very good way of putting it. There's peaks and valleys for yeah. both of us. There's, there's very little doubt about that. I mean, you know, I don't think she, you know, applies for you know news jobs saying perform fellatio on a uh, washed up pitcher in a bathroom <laughs> yeah. in a bar in Minneapolis. He wasn't well, washed up. The lower the end of her stuff. He was, a, he was a good dude too, Scotty. That well, means. As long as they stay away from Redstone, I'm fine with the bathrooms. Oh, from where? Come on. From Redstone. Oh, Redstone. Oh, come oh, on. Now you got to make fun of Kirby. If I have to hear that one more time. God, I always take shots at the guy. You got it. We worked there. No, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Well, and I'll tell you, the, 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 the whole Kirby Puckett thing always strikes a nerve with me because he's about the best human being I've ever met in my life. He's just, oh, God, he make me so mad. He's just, yeah. well, he's a shit. He's a, he, he was not a good husband. He's a no. shitty husband. He couldn't keep his, you know what, in his pants. And, and he he's the first to admit it. I mean, he, he, he didn't hide. Well, he tried to hide it a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, some guys, that's just how some people, I mean, some people have that weakness. But, yeah. I mean, I, 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 when, when that all went down and people wanted to try to convince themselves that Kirby Puckett was some kind of a monster, it's just, it's so fucking out. For one thing, his wife, uh, his ex wife, his widow, was not a, a very good person. Yeah. I mean, she was, she was. I mean, do not do, don't get me wrong. There's she got, po- she was. I mean, she she, she had she had plenty that. of reason to be mad. She she yeah. she had some reasons to be upset along with. <laughs> but I mean, she even even if you would have been a saint, she was you know, one of those women who would have just like driven him to 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 kill himself. Yeah. I mean, so you're, you're saying it was a great couple. Oh, uh, well, I mean, well, they really so they went really together well. I mean, he got yeah. he got married because you know he thought that's what you do. what he should that's do. That's what you do. You know, you get a like family. A lot of do. people do that though. Sure, yep. sure. Especially sports guys. I mean, you look at them. It's sad to say, but I have to say seventy. 70% of them are not. Well, and the, 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 I don't know if you remember this too. These, 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 well, I know one woman in particular, there may have been more, who started claiming you know, that they had Kirby's love child. Kirby could not have children. I mean, the, the Kirby Jr. is adopted. So, I mean, these people are just fucking, wow. they're all lunatics. They're fucking just, you know, latchers on kind of people. But. I'm not saying that he wasn't drunk. I'm not saying that he didn't mess around with her in a oh, bathroom. That's, that's... I'm saying that that was. 
It was too sure. much, that story. Well, I don't, it, I don't, it I didn't personally go as far as it was taken. And I've like worked that, there a long time. Do not believe that that happened. Things like that do get blown out of proportion. Totally. Uh, they do tend to. I mean, not, not that they're you know acceptable or, or whatever, but I mean, Kirby Puckett is, is one of the nicest, sweetest, most you know gentle, kind. He was. I, I mean, I loved him to death. I, 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 I've never seen anybody give of himself. You know, he, ever, he refused. I mean, didn't suggest. He refused to ever take a day off at home. Because he didn't want to be, he didn't want to be the day that some kid showed up at the dome and Kirby wasn't playing. He never. I mean, you can go back and look it up. Did not take days off at home. That's awesome. Yeah, he refused to. I mean, it, and when he would do, he he when, when he would stop. Most players, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of players would just kind of breeze by the people for autographs because they know once you get stuck, you're going to be there. Not only would he stop, but he would keep doing last call to make sure nobody. Cause he, he's not going to go home and have one kid be like, I didn't get it. So I mean, he would like yeah. sign them all. And then he'd be stop and shout out, okay, did everybody get one? Did everybody get one? And then, then there'd be some more, no, we didn't yet. And he'd keep doing that. Okay, now did I get everybody? He'd keep doing that and doing that and doing that until finally everybody, I mean, he'd be there for hours. That's crazy. And isn't that what the epitome it, of sports should be, though? Well, you know? It's just, I mean, he, 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 he gave back. I mean, he's just one of the nicest, kindest, and not to mention, just one of the best players of all time. And yeah. his clutch but, as a human being. But be. to go back to the cheating thing, because you're saying, I mean, that sounds like that's really the knock on him. And cheating is... That's something that between you and the person you cheated on yes. is bad, but right. otherwise right. I don't give a shit what yeah. you do in your life, right. so right. that doesn't matter to me. I mean, yeah. But I'm also wondering, and since we do have a gal in the room, we can ask her, but oh God. You, well, I'm just wondering if you marry a ball player, You're like, stupid. what the fuck You're are dumb. you expecting? Then you just, honestly, I mean, but no, but do you maybe just go, well, it's worth it for the perks? No, I think that they really believe that it's oh, going to be different. Okay. I, so I think that they really stupid. do. I mean, I, 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 I love Adrian Peterson, and I hate to bring this up. But, I mean, he's got how many freaking kids oh, sure. with how many freaking women? Sure. You know? I mean, love the guy. I really hope he comes back next year. Can't wait to watch him dominate. I hope. But, I mean, if you if you marry him, I well, but, obviously she knows it. There's a She's difference with Adrian, it. though, I think, though, too. is because And we've kind of disagreed on this. is Because you've said, you know, Adrian's a good guy. And a lot of people do say, if in general, he's a good guy. He's mm-hmm. just an idiot. If you're He's the nicest guy yeah. ever. If you're yeah. cheating on Don't someone, hand, you're, that's not good. But then if you're also having multiple children with multiple women, now we're Dude, crossing I'm a sorry, line. but how that's hard a different is it to line. put on a condom? Like, that's what well, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. There's I mean, a responsibility put, like, to yourself on. even maybe at some point. Maybe he is, but he's just like Superman, so it doesn't matter. You know? like It doesn't matter what he does. He is a specimen. We've all seen that. I've never thought of that angle. Maybe the man is he's prophylactic proof. The gophers in 18 years are going to be killing it, okay? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> that's you know that's assuming he's having his kids in this Twin Cities area. Yeah, no, no, Texas, no. there's a, there's is a lot. Be. Yep, and yeah, Texas. There's, yeah. there's a lot in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, don't, we don't have the, much of a Texas. Was it one in South Dakota? I mean, yeah, oh my God. they well, really are spread out. Okay, I can give him that one. All right, South Dakota is super boring. What well, else yeah, but how do you find a hot chick? Yeah, he found the one. He found the one. Yeah, there was one hot chick in town. And nobody's confirmed that she's hot. Yeah, I think I think there's there can be a difference between being a bad husband and a bad person. I don't. You know, Kirby Puckett would admit to you today if he was alive that he was a bad husband mm-hmm. all right i mean it, it is what it is that yeah. doesn't make you a bad person no right? yeah, but people are so quick to judge i mean uh, yeah, it, it's like with the adrian peterson thing uh yeah okay he did the guy the guy is an idiot and he does not have any kind of good parenting skills whatsoever we, we i mean we 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 absolutely know these things to be true well, he's from texas but I he's mean. not a bad but th- 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 so so what that does is all of a sudden in, you know, here in, in Judgment Central, the state of Minnesota, yeah, where we no line kidding. up, where we line, we'll, we'll stand in line to judge you. I mean, to it, judge others, we'd uh, love to uh, do that. It's, yes. it's unbelievable. So, so just, but in the state of Minnesota, you can't just sit there and say, boy, yeah, you know, good guy, made a mistake. You know, he's, he's got some, you know, he's got some blind spots. Everybody's got some blind spots. Uh, you, and, but, you know, that, that was his. He doesn't have good parenting skills. No, it's, it's all, he's, a, he's an animal. Yeah. He's a fucking animal. Get him out of the league. But yeah. there, there's no defending this. There's no bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, if, if you were raised the way he was, then maybe you could be a slightly bit more open-minded to the fact that not everybody is from Wasika. Yeah. All right? Not everyone's got June and Ward Cleaver. Yeah. Not everyone is raised the same way. It doesn't mean that it's okay or that it should go on or you know, perpetuate it. At some point, you have to break these cycles. But it doesn't mean you have to fucking condemn a human being yeah. because, he, because he was raised it, you know, incorrectly or, or, or less than perfectly or flawless or in, in, a, in a flawed manner and in a way that has left him with certain blind spots. But, but, but people around here just, we, we love to be judgmental. Just Well, I think, too, it was so shocking. You know, like I, of all people, you never see something like that coming because from of his Peterson. image. Yeah, I mean, yeah. his image to me, and even knowing, like, I don't know him, but I've met him plenty of times, and he's a very nice person. Yes, you know, is. and you just do not expect that. And nope. like that day when that was coming out, no way. And of course, it's in the wake of Ray Rice. That was an unfortunate yeah. timing. Yeah. Uh, couldn't have been any worse. And nope. shitstorm. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, he's paid his price. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I agree with that. I mean, or at least he's in the process of doing it. He's got to, you know, jump through the hoops and then yeah. show remorse and, you know, community be, service uh, and whatnot. The, mm-hmm. See the shrink and, 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 you know, learn some skills and stuff like that. But uh, see you, Scott. I, I, I mean, I don't, I, just, I don't know how. 
how much of that actually does any good and how much of it is just to make, you know, just to appearances, keep up appearances. Yeah. I'm it's still like, it's all like, about it's him it's going like, through therapy, though. You know, Whether it works or not, I want him to go through it. Well, but it's like, well, yeah, because, well, because his actions, you know, are Please. dealing with children. I mean, these are, you know, you don't want something like that to happen again. But, it, but like on a, on a different note, like if you've got some just fucking latch in the office who's fucking making passes at women, what is sensitivity training going to do for this guy? Or you got some fucking racist like Riley Cooper. Yeah, uh, I mean, exactly do right. you think he's not a racist anymore because he went through sensitivity training? Did you guys? He still hates black people. Did you guys hear he? Sh- he's the uh, on the Philadelphia Eagles calendar. Yes, he's yes. The February, you know, Black History Month. Black History Month. It was, they, they, said, they said, the, it, was, the, they said it was a the complete calendars. coincidence, and the printer did it. I they, can't. They, no. Totally it's accidental. Yeah. It's, uh, that it can't it, happen. It's, it's 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 fairly it's fairly humorous. It's just it's, a little ironic. Final break. Little. You know, folks who've listened to the show, they know that uh, I lived in the Uptown area here, right uh, right down Pleasant Avenue, as a matter of fact, and on the corner of Pleasant Lake is where Uptown Pond is, and I have been here numerous times, had numerous uh, business dealings with them. It's just a nice place with good, honest people. Bob Jacobs and the owner, you run the place. You've always been good to me. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we try. That's, our, that's part of our business. We're here to help people, mm-hmm. and um, uh, so everybody walks in the door. We hope we can help. Well, what uh, I, you know, what I've always appreciated is uh, when people are nice to people who are the low man on the totem pole. Like when I was a bat boy, I liked the, the star guys who were nice to the bat boy. Right. And I mean, I came in here, and you guys didn't know who I was. You didn't know I had a radio show, and you right. treated me great. I mean, right. just the guy off the street. Listen, that's the idea with uh, I think a smaller family type business. Uh, somebody walks in the door. We don't want to let them see that see everybody gets treated the same way and we hope that's the case and yeah. we don't want to see them leave without uh, we try our very best to, it's, to it's really easy it's, it's, it's easy it's low pressure good honest people right in the corner of Lake Street and Pleasant Avenue you guys got to check out Uptown Pond The Rusty Gatenby Review is the entertaining show about entertainment from movies music and more award winning TV guy Rusty Gatenby and his review is the podcast with the biggest cast in entertainment part of the Alive and Social Network you can get that Minnesota connection to Hollywood and beyond any time of the day or night simply by clicking on the RustyGatenbyReview.com. That's the RustyGatenbyReview.com, part of the Alive and Social Network. Stretch, Jeff Dubay show on a Monday. As I mentioned, the hockey intensive week. I mean, we got a chick from Canada today. Woo woo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, are, are, is it true what they say? Are girls from Canada drunk and easy? <laughs> uh, we're drunk a lot. I'll give you that much. Well, that's makes, that's one goes with the other. Uh, <laughs> She's tomorrow, married. That's the only reason the easy <laughs> part got tomorrow, dropped off. Tomorrow we'll talk to, go, to, to, to Dan Peters, a little go for hockey, and a little Tiger Talk. He's a golf guru. Maybe even get a little Masters preview from him, but we'll have him back in April. Uh, and, oh, of course, Wild Wednesday. So it's a big hockey week. And as I mentioned to you a week or two ago, I mean, we're on the verge of, uh, of going to five, maybe six shows a week. Uh, are you going to be able to ha- handle that? I, I, you got a lot of shit going on. I haven't been talked to about it. Uh, there's going to be some things that are going to have to be figured out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, well, I'm I mean, on well, board. It's his fault. Down. It's oh, this yeah. guy's fault. It's my fault. Well, well, yeah, I mean, here's the sell thing. some shit for me, and I'm in. Well, here's I'm the in. thing for podcasting. And people's like, you know, how can we do three shows a week? That's a weird number. And well, basically, for podcasting, you do as much program as you need to support the advertisers you have. It's like you, it's like you don't buy the minivan until you have the kids. Exactly. You know? So why would I do five, six shows a week for you know for for bare bones advertising? But now you know, you know, dish comes in all gung ho and, and he, you know he he gets Bernardo motivated. Now you're yeah. talking to Wurtz Beverage. You got you know there's what you got this bar in Victoria that's kind of chomping at the bit a little bit. Or I, I I mean there's there's some stuff in the hopper. And if these shows, I know we got the place in St. Paul that's kind of that's going to pick us up. You know Paradise's place. Uh, Dave Paradise, the old uh, manager at the old bar Abilene, there he's opening a joint in St. Paul that's going to have us on. Uh, they're going to be. I think they're on East. They're on East Seventh, like down past that Allery's. New st- wait. Oh, okay, that's wait. West Seventh. That'd be way down okay. West 7th. East? Well, no, no well, West 7th. I thought, what, what, okay, well, whatever. Uh, well, you know, the, you know where the Super America is, right off 94. That's yeah, not, that, yeah, that's, that's 7th. East 7th. Okay, that's yep. what I'm saying. That's East 7th. That's yeah. what I said. It's right by that. You know, you know, the, you know the building with the, with the picture of Herb Brooks on the side of it? Yeah. It's in that building. Okay, that's okay. Right. I know exactly you know what, what I'm talking, talking about. about. Yeah, I know. Yeah. By much fallen okay. state. Well, Dave, have you talked to Dave Paradise yet? Sean yeah. has. Sean and I have talked to him. Nice. He's a, he's a great guy. He's a, he was a manager at Bar Abilene. And when I was living uptown, I used to go there for Tuesday night meat sauce trivia oh, because yeah. because we Googled everything and fucking yeah. won gift cards. It, just, nice. it, was, it, was, it was money every week. Just meat it, sauce yeah. like a moron. Yeah, he is. He's a, good, he's a nice guy though. He's a, a nice, and he does play up the moron bit a little bit. You know, his fiance are, are they married now? They're married. They're married. God, yeah. she's so pretty. 
I got on my baseball. I team. See now, here's the thing. What did that? So what, did, what did that mean? Well, here's the did thing. Anybody else me. take that a certain? I mean, way? Have you seen the engagement no, pictures? I, I, I just I saw them the other day, and it's they're a, like eating cheeseburgers. It's a mismatch couple. Gorgeous, yeah. and it's, a, it's yeah. just so strange. It's a, it's a mismatch. It's a mismatch, yeah. mismatch couple, and I feel bad Looks for Meat Sauce because the rest of his life he's got to hear about it. Yeah, no but 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 nonetheless, it's hey, I'll kick in your coverage is okay. Like that's that's not a bad thing to get shit Well, it is, but when you do it, you know, in the public eye, the way he has, he'll never hear the end of it. No, that's true. It's like getting a fifth degree possession is not the end of the world, but you do it in the fucking public eye, and you never hear the end of it. Yeah, so it's no just, kidding. It's just it's all about the uh, surrounding circumstances. But anyway, <laughs> he, he, you know, so I got to know Dave at, at Bar Abilene. Yeah. And I think I talk about the kiss of death. I mean, I was always kind of joking around with him. Like, God, this place has fucking been here forever. Places come and go uptown. This place has been here forever. So it closes down. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, you know, time Changed has come. Hands. Well, I mean, it's like the only place down there where you can't sit on the fucking roof. I mean, you got to mm-hmm. sit on the roof these days to make any money. It's all but, about the patios. Exactly. So, I mean, he's opening this place in St. Paul, and we're looking forward to it because it's going to be this really cool, like, uh, 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 depression era speakeasy kind of a thing. Like, you have yeah. to push through a bookcase, a secret door to get in, you know, nice. kind of, that kind of a thing. Gangster, mm-hmm. gangster theme kind of a deal. Yeah. And they already wrote us into their budget. So, I mean, oh, this nice. is a slam dunk. So, you, what you do is get Bernard to give you this one. You get a commission for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's you get your name on that one. <laughs> it's, I, exactly. I, forget, I, forget the, I forget what it's called, but it's right, right there in East Seventh, that, that Herb Brooks building. As a matter of yeah. fact, uh, the Brooks family is giving them a real nice break on rent, too. Yeah. Good people. Well, it's nice, too. I mean, the studio is great here, but, I mean, the Jubei show was – I really liked it when we were doing at uh, a couple of the other places, the live locations. Yeah. We get some hot, listeners. Hot women everywhere. Yeah, exactly. That was distracting. It was, was a bit distracting. It was outrageous. It was <laughs> outrageous. But outrageous. they're buying you drinks, though. I mean, that's pretty nice. Well, no, these were, there's, there's, there's the wait staff. This is the server. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wait, and, and slash, I mean, there are others. So they are bringing drinks, but, then, yes. But, yeah. Well, yeah. They're, they're bringing us drinks. Yeah. So oh, yeah, definitely. I mean yeah. So here, I mean hey, I'm running off to the bathroom to fill my Powerade water with m- 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 bottle with water. So no, it's not, it's good, not that's same. another good reason to get out there. It's not the same. I haven't had a beer during the show since we've been in this studio. Oh, I, I almost weird. brought some beer. Well, you're allowed. I, I mean, a friend of mine, Jason Lindsay, uh, has been on the show a couple times. He brought a couple beers. Oh yeah, we had we had one uh, last week on the pubcast. Uh, the, our guest brought oh, us. Yeah, some yeah, beers, yeah. So. You know what? I, I'm gonna I've been meaning to bring this up with you too because, uh, you know, when 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 you you linked to the city page a story about the tall boy. Yeah, and then yeah, and official tall boy in Minnesota. So when I see, you know, when I see anything on the live and social network on, on Facebook, I share it because we, you know, we're team players. Mm-hmm. That I, I'm almost wishing that I had not shared that story because it's been driving me nuts. Because everybody is into it, and and I keep getting. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just, I, I just put it up on my page to share it, you know, to help, you know, to promote yeah. your show and and that guy. What's his name? Uh, Jared Fagerberg. Yes, uh, that's an unfortunate name, but he he. <laughs> The, 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 I keep, you know, I, you always get the notifications. I mean, I know you can get new you can, settings. Yeah, you can switch that. it so you don't see them. If but you I mean, to, yeah. it's like I constantly get, or for a week or so, people were just that thread just took off. He it's is like our, just, he is always our biggest draw. Like we get the most listens when Jerry comes on. He's only been on that, twice, and I'm he gets you, a article, huge audience. But, but that, that was the cover of the city pages. I mean, that was the that was the front of the city pages was the uh, official tall boy can of Minnesota, and he broke them all down. And it's a great article. And he, the thing I like about him, and that's why. He, we bring him on the pubcast is he's a smart ass uh cynical just he he's very very negative but witty at the same time mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. And, that, and that's what he does that's in city cool. pages too it's that's fun cool. it's, that's, he's very fun well, that's kind of the city pages thing exactly exactly uh one other thing too and this is a little off topic but you know you were talking about like uh, you know tall boy being a, a cover story to the city pages How, could the news stop leading with fucking dance competition Bullshit. Oh my God! Have you guys seen that story? No. It's, well, you, you, you know I'm really bad at the news. I'm really bad at the news. Before the show, yeah, it's fucking embarrassing. I mean, it's it's, it's 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 well. I mean, my ex-wife is a cheerleader coach, so I'm kind of I got exposed to this whole culture of cheerleading and dance competitions, and it's fucking sick. Yeah. I mean, these people. Fun thing. They, 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 I mean, you talk about like 13 year old girls with their faces painted, making these psychotic faces, and 13, jazz. like seven. It's fucking. Well, they it's, start there. It's, yeah. it's, it's a horrible culture. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just. I mean, like, they, I mean, I, I'm sure. That reality show, Dance Moms, is an exaggeration with that just beast of a woman. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure it's an exaggeration. I'm sure it's a caricature of the of the whole scene. I don't but think it's so. A, it's a fucking <laughs> horrible scene, and it, I mean, you're in the state tournament, which don't get me started. I mean, yeah. cheerleading is not a sport. Dancing is not a sport. It, it just these things are not made. I mean, who, the fact that the, 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 every, every other, God, I just, you could, I'm going down a bad road here because these bad yeah. memories are rushing in. But then my ex-wife, you know, she Jeff wanted to, Dubé she wanted me to be like, <laughs> well, she wanted me, well, she wanted me to be supportive of these fucking cheerleading competitions. And that's not, that's not true. Cheerleading, cheerleading, not cheering, cheering, like standing on the sideline, cheering for the game. Maybe not as a, as a huge athletic sport, but the competition cheerleading. I mean, well, they can, it's a sophisticated they can, no, no, thing. No. It's not necessarily well, that's, a sport. That's, that's shit's Don't athletic. Blur, you're, well, see, I bet you couldn't do that. No, I couldn't. And you're blurring the line between as athletics and sports. Yes
No, there's never been a sport, Ooh, in my I opinion. I like that. There's never, people, Figure skating, how many, not a how sport. Many, how many times have we but done this be. debate on sports radio over the years? What's a sport, what's not? And I finally just fucking, the, 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 somebody had to step up and just say the emperor has no clothes. It's so obvious. Anything with a fucking judge is not a sport. Can you imagine football with no end zones? Just having a team battle back and forth, up and down, and then, and then five guys huddle and say, okay, you win, you were, you were better. <laughs> If there's a judge, it's a contest. If there's a judge, it's a fucking state fair. So it's a it's a pie. It's a cake. It's a fucking sheep. It's a it's a beauty contest. Ooh. But, 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 well, boxing is a little different because you can have knockouts. That's a decisive win. True. And but, but yeah, I mean, but, 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 but if boxing you don't have a box. But, but, what if you don't have boxing, a knockout? Boxing is the only thing that doesn't apply. It's because boxing is also crooked. I mean, the judges are yeah. as fucking d- crooked. Well, no, but it, figure skating is not a sport. Figure skating is a competition. It's a it's an exhibition. It's a show. No, it I is think not a competition a sport. can still be a sport though. Uh, well. I, see, well, I, I, sports I, I, are competition. I feel like I like where you're going with all, it. All like, sports, I don't have a good rebuttal. All sports but... are a competition. Not all competitions are sports. Yeah. Okay. I can, a, I can but sports, that, sports but is a subset of competitions. But anything with a judge, I, I cannot call a sport. Where does golf fit in here? Because I've Golf's always said that's a sport. game. It's not a sport. I think it's absolutely sport. Think hand, it a sport? Hand, hand coordination is, a, is, an athletic, is an athletic skill. But again, that, that, that is takes part of dream. dancing, too. Well, again, I'm not saying there's not athleticism Thank involved you. in dancing and cheerleading. I'm saying it's not a sport. The people who stand on the sideline and cheer for the sport are not a sport in and of themselves. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. It's a, I mean, when you get to the point where it's like, who has the best cheerleading team? No, we don't give a fuck. We want to know who's got the best team. See, look, just beyond the cheerleaders, there's an actual fucking football game right there. Hold on, where did this That's start? That's what we care about. Did this okay, start well, with the well, worst football? Team cheerleaders? No, they started. They started, they started, they started like, we'll, we'll just make the cheerleading bigger than the football. Oh, you mean how to cheerleading? I'm saying, like, start? yeah, I'm wondering if they were like, you know what? It's football. Nobody gives a shit about the football team. We'll be know. bigger than that. We'll just That's, go into the whole idea of cheerleading gym. competitions is so asinine. I mean, it's like, <laughs> we care about our sports teams, not the people standing there next to them cheering. And the fact that you want to compete, my cheering team against that cheering team, who's got the best cheering? It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, I think if they're competing, it's, who's got the like gymnastics. Then it's like, who's got the best tailgate party? Then who's got the best fucking pregame show? I mean, just God, it's just who cares? We want to know who's got the best team. I agree, but I think what she's saying is there's a, defi- there's a difference between the cheerleaders who have pom poms on the sideline there is. Yeah. There is. and the people that are I building these pyramids. Well, I'm not a cheerleader. I'm not a dancer. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that I think that that's pretty athletic. You'd be and I, that, I know I, I couldn't do that. Well, uh, no, there's a, there's a crossover. I mean, there, there, uh, there's some girls who are like on the competition team are also on the football cheer or yeah. basketball cheer, whatever. I don't. I mean, it's. I mean, but the point is, in, in a roundabout way, these this this, like, this psychotic fucking culture. Of of, of 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 dance and cheer competitions, the the, the beef here is that Faribault, who won it, that they that they stole their dance routine from some other team that they saw online. But who the fuck invents a dance? I mean, it's every dance move that you. I've seen these competitions. They all look the same. Yeah. They all make the same fucking moves. You can rearrange them in whatever different order to make it look like a different routine. But you're not fucking inventing dance. No. Of course they stole it. No, they did. No, no, they invented dance. Dance was invented this weekend in the Twin Cities yeah. by Faribault High School. Well, what the fuck do you think? Of course they're ripping it off. Well, no, no one's inventing this shit. Yeah. You're right. And the worst part of the story What's is wrong with these is people? that they've been cleared anyway, even by the people who would give a shit and maybe think they were stealing. How can you plagiarize a dance? Right, it, but they were even clear yeah. of that. You still get. And this is what what I find interesting about this is I played hockey and there are helicopter parents when when you get to sports in general, but yeah. hockey's really hockey bad. Hockey moms. Oh. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. and then I mean and my dad was insane at my games, but um, but I I imagine with this cheerleading thing that the the parents must be even that much more involved and that yeah. much more annoying and putting their politics oh, into it. Well, and, because the, then oh. you got women involved. That's yeah. never good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for whoa, taking whoa, whoa. It that extra step for me. Thank you. That's where I was Hockey going. Moms but. can be bad enough, but no, I can't oh, imagine I dance well, moms. Oh, well, that show horrible. I've never actually watched, but thirty seconds of it could kill me. I it makes me feel sick. I hate I hate reality TV. Reality TV is just it's fucking awful. It's just people who have no real gift doing what they can to try to be famous. And it's just like, go Did you away. see that Kim Kardashian thing that she said? Like, you want to ask me what I do? Check my fucking bank account or something yeah, she's, like she's that? Yeah, she's the, arguably the worst human being to walk the face of the earth oh, since Hitler. God, she just doesn't have... Love to hate her, hate she, to love yeah, her. I, I just, I don't know. Oh, I've it's all about hate, thing but separates... I can't stop watching. It's such a train wreck. All, that, all, Kanye, all oh. that separates her from Hitler is the ability or power to kill you know, millions. And a she huge doesn't, ass. She doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. One was one and one has one. But yeah. she's, she's a worthless human being. She's just a giant pile of flesh. Uh, it's just uh, There's not a redeeming... Well, there's not a redeeming quality in that entire family. I mean, they just... It's, but it, they got her watching. No, like, what the? F- 
I told you, love to hate them, hate to love them. There's just nothing that I can do about it. There's, <laughs> there's just nothing that I can do. I can't stop watching. It's such a train wreck. Kanye, they're, disgusting. They're even addictive. worse. She's They've addictive. made that little spawn child of theirs that just like yeah, it's just, it's just a whole the whole reality thing. I mean, there's just there's there hasn't been anything positive to come out. It's just, it's just like it worked for MTV, and everybody saw so found these ways to, to to make really really cheap TV that everybody wanted to watch, and it just was fucking awful. There's got to be okay. Well, there's one silver lining: the fact that she is that rich and her TV shows have been that big. There's a shitload of people that actually have gotten jobs because of her. I mean, there is a one Unfortunately, positive thing about Unfortunately, she said that, it. too. Well, I mean, I suppose... She said that. She said that. That's it why back, I think you should her. take that back. I hate myself yeah, now. it's horrible. Gonna, I can't believe you just we'll said that. We'll edit that out. We'll edit that out. Well, I mean... Yeah, but, she, uh, but honestly, the economy, she did create something, even though it's nothing. The U.S. economy would be okay if Kim Kardashian would have been born. We would, we would have managed to, to, to move through. You know, we would, have, we, would have, we would have been all right. No, the unemployment would go down by a point. I mean... By a, by a point one, but still. Well, I mean, but she's probably also got fucking, you know, kids in sweatshops making her fucking yoga pants. Well, I mean, oh, for sure. Too. For I mean, sure. And, and a lot of them at that. A lot of them for those pants. Have you yeah. seen her ass? Yes. Well, yeah, well I mean, it's, uh, 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 who hasn't? Eight but, kids for one pair of yoga pants. Yeah, but uh, the, uh, the whole the whole reality TV, the whole just, uh, you know, people want to be famous for, and then, and then social media feeds it too. People want to be famous for, with no discernible skill or nothing that really makes you stand out in a crowd, but they think they, Poppy. They, everybody wants to, well, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> nice. that's, 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 there's a, that's, 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 that's I'm a, fucking with no, you. No, no, I was saying there's that. a difference between fame and infamy. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, one, 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 one people strive for, the other gets thrust upon you. And, uh, I, I am definitely the latter. The latter, yeah. Yes, I always get those two mixed up, the latter <laughs> and the former. I always have to stop and think about it to make sure I got the right one. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's... Uh, closing thoughts. I mean, we're in the final minutes here. Uh, oh, I never got to get into. I mean, do you come here to work every day? I mean, this is just a fucking empty house. Do you really come here every day? <laughs> I come here a good amount. Yeah. Like every I, day? Well, I how mean, often? Not every day. I haven't been here in a couple days. Okay, so you still got your you other gig going. The pizza. He's joint. taking naps no, I'm for out of sure. There. Guaranteed. Really? Yeah, I usually just work at home or the library. Just make stops out of business. So what does Sean have you doing? Uh, you know, for, for those who don't know, Patrick is a uh, he's a Facebook friend of mine. Somebody I started having on the show, and then uh, and then uh, you know the, the, the Alive and Social Network just grew by leaps. And bounds and it still is. Uh, yeah, they Dubai got me the job. Well, that's not true. No, no, no. You're, 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 you've been very motivated. I mean, you, you, you definitely took them by storm. Yeah. Uh, but they started to hire some you know, kind of executives. People to get out there and be, you know, beat the bushes and make some money for yours truly. And yeah, Patrick, exactly. Patrick, Call me. So they, we hired two people, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you, and somebody else. Yeah, George. George. I don't know yeah. George, what's George's last name. Hess or Haas or something. Oh, good. I thought you said Eunice. And that's, no, that's no, a, no. I, I we know, got a couple that's a, that's sales a, George Eunice is a sales guy from back in the. Well, Sean and Scott are the masters. Yes, you know? they are. They, they, yes, they are. know what's up. But in all honesty, does it? And I'm not saying this to suck up. Sean Bernard's knowledge of digital sales and marketing freaks the shit out of me. Yeah. I mean, doesn't it doesn't like like he'll, It's like sabermetrics. I mean, like have you like he you got to see him sit down with a client and explain to him how the downloads relate to like radio ratings and, and, and you know how how we can tr track who's yeah. listens and we know exactly what kind of people are, are listening to the show. We can find out if they're coming to your business and direct marketing this and yeah. feedback that. And we I mean it's fucking unbelievable. It's crazy. I've been to a couple couple meetings with him and I just sit there and I'm yeah. just like ah. Oh. I mean, I'm not kissing his Ass. No, he's like brain man of digital <laughs> yeah, sales. It's exactly. well, I mean in a positive way. I mean, exactly. yeah, I was, I was wondering where you're going. Well, I mean, with I that. mean, he just it, it is no seriously. His, his knowledge of, I, I mean, it's it's like anybody can sit down and do a podcast. You know, and, and, and you can you can honestly go to Spreaker.com, and 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 get it or the Spreaker app on your phone, and get a membership or whatever, and and send talk into your phone, and it will be a podcast. And call it and, a podcast, and, and, yep. and it will be up there. Mm -hmm. But how you take that and turn it into revenue is. An art form, and Sean Bernard is basically he basically he's written the book. Written the book. Wrote, he's written the book. He's written the book on it because well, he started two podcast networks from nothing. Yeah, and, and now he's and bringing in national people. I know this dude Paul from the McCarty. Daily Show. Yeah, what, what the, the fuck? Yeah, he's got Paul McCartney dude, I'm intimidated on his show. Like, yeah. who is this I'm guy? intimidated enough by Suhan. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, I thought you know I didn't Suhan scared the shit out of me. Now we got to fucking add guys from the Daily Show. Yeah, I know. I just name drop your guys' names all day long. Oh, you know, we got Jim Suhan and Michael Russo from the Star Tribune. I Jeff know. Dubay, Rusty Gatenby. Just like name drop, name drop, well, name hopefully drop. Hopefully, people have heard of a few of us. Oh, <laughs> just keep saying it until their face lights up. I've heard bit. of all you guys. You know, you guys are all. Everyone's heard well, of well, well, yeah, you. Well, know? well, yeah. I mean, come on. Again, again, it's a, it's more infamy than fame. Hey, but there's no such thing as bad nah, press, right? I don't think so. Well, a lot might, of people don't even. True. They just know you from sports talk radio. Yeah. Well, uh, then they. The lady today I was talking to, I asked her if she knew who you were. Oh, is that the K fan guy? Yeah, she's she like, hot? oh yeah. Oof. Seriously. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <We're laughs> abort. Wow. I'm not sure which way that was going. Honestly, I couldn't read it. Could you get a read on that? Was that good so, or bad? I, I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> I'm so confused. I have two. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I hate. I, She's you know, probably what? listening, so let's just say yes. We'll just go with yes. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> I think that's a safe assumption. <laughs> Jesus. I, I still, want to Google this chick. <laughs> what the fuck? Who is guys? this? I'm seriously still confused. Yeah, I know. Me too. No, I really got to keep it. You got to keep it. Keep it loose. So I really got to get my tooth fixed now. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we got to call some dental people. Yeah, how yeah. about that? That is a pretty sharp look for me. Don't you guys, it's, it's a, a podcast. Look. Nobody would have known that, all right? We're not on TV. Just yeah, I've, 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 I've been low-key about the fact that I've... Well, fairly low-key about the fact that I lost a tooth. I think I've mentioned it maybe once. I think you mentioned it a couple times. But, but, <laughs> but, I've, but, I've, but I have not... I have not uh, there's no photographs of me on the internet with this gap tooth friend yet, and there will not be. I will not allow anybody to see me with this fucking... Yeah, and it's, of course, it's right in the middle. Isn't that unbelievable? It's brilliant. Right. He's Thank like, God you're not on TV. I'm a hillbilly. I'm a fucking slut judge yokel. I'm, 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 uh, what's the guy from The Simpsons? Cletus? Cletus from The Simpsons. That's it. I guess we're done. I got nothing. <laughs> I, got, I got nothing Booyah. to close with. Go wild. Yeah, whatever. I, I'm done. <laughs>